Adam, thank you for coming. Um, first off, LF0 is a proof of stake, public blockchain. Uh, my question is how it can be used? Hey, so uh, first of all, it can be used as most of the other blockchains. We are, of course, building our own uh, DeFi ecosystem. And right now we are targeting mostly privacy-related use cases. We are investing a lot into Liminal, which will be our privacy framework. Uh, and uh, basically the pitch right now is that we want to give people private DeFi that will be compliant. So that will, for example, uh, allow for selective reveals, whether you will be able to either for regulator or for the exchange where you want to send your token, reveal that you, for example, had nothing to do with a uh, list of blacklisted addresses or with a uh, hack which has a known origin or, or things like that. So basically, if I have any issues related to privacy, to compliance, you are the first company I should come to, right? Hopefully, yep, yep. <laughs> uh, that's right, that's right. Uh, actually, literally yesterday, we debuted with uh, Liminal Zero, which is the first uh, first part of our Liminal. We are running a hackathon of this conference where uh, where people can experiment. It still resides only on our DevNet. It's going to take some time until it uh, reaches uh, mainnet through the testnet. But yep, something is out. We are super happy and super excited that, uh, that we can give it out to people who can play around with it. So, speaking of uh, privacy, which is some, some sort of a, somewhat related to um, security as well, uh, do you have any like uh, a set list of solutions that could be applied immediately in order to help maintain that uh, uh, peace of mind and the feeling of security when we want to um, develop our project within a Live Zero network? Mm, best advice for builders of their own chain would be do not build from scratch unless you've got hundreds of millions and a lot of time. Uh, for now, I think there are two, uh, two leading uh, blockchain frameworks. We are using Substrate, which is one developed by Parity, and the other one is Cosmos SDK. I think like the best advice I can give for, for blockchain builders is take one of these frameworks and uh, innovate only on one aspect of it, not on everyone. Uh, when it comes to smart contract builders, uh, of course, uh, feel free to, to reach out to our documentation. We have a lot of tutorials regarding how to how to start. We are uh, finishing a partnership with uh, our auditing uh, company that will be providing us with tutorials uh, related to security specific. So, uh, so it's going to be things like what should you look uh, specifically for for the audit, for example, to to finish quickly. Which parts you can you can check yourself. Uh, that's I think will come in uh, Q1 of the next year. Right now, my next question is, uh, we are together uh, at the NBX um, event in Berlin, and just before our interview, we talked that you had many chats with people who are uh, not very mature builders or soon-to-be builders of the projects. I believe that they address many of their challenges as well as concerns. Uh, is there anything uh, interesting or unique that you noticed during those chats? One thing that I noticed during this chat, uh, I don't know, I think uh, right now we are focusing a lot uh, on uh, finding the teams of, uh, indeed the teams of, of young builders, and uh, I think right now, comparing for example to the situation one or two years ago, very significantly more teams which are very open to building on uh, new upcoming ecosystems rather than just building on Ethereum. I think two years ago it was almost obvious for almost most of the young builders that Ethereum is the way to go or perhaps like Solana or like maybe there were two or three chains. Right now I think the situation is shifting. A lot of people are seeing opportunity in being one of the first projects deploying on a particular ecosystem. So uh, I think how, how I see it and how I see it as well is that uh, it would be pretty hard or actually border and impossible to come out with decentralized exchange, deploy it on Ethereum or Solana and have any measurable success. While when it comes to, to new upcoming ecosystems where the race for the best decentralized exchange or for the best lending protocol is still unresolved, I think it's much easier to, to actually uh, succeed without, without coming up with a very exotic uh, financial instrument. So uh, I think it, it requires, it's why it requires for sure, uh, for sure a lot of execution kind of skills and, uh, and programming, but perhaps little less uh, of uh, 
deep DeFi knowledge uh, when when succeeding in, in this mature ecosystems. So so yeah, that's that's what I I think I see comparing to what what happened one two years ago. Well, that's a very interesting observation. Do you think that it might have something to do with the current bear market? That probably some people who are into Web3, they uh, develop some mistrust to networks such as Ethereum for some reason. I wouldn't say mistrust. I mean, I, I, I don't think I noticed any kind of uh, mistrust. When it comes to, uh, to, the, bear market, uh, to, the, to the market situation, uh, yeah, I, I guess there is uh, a bit less teams. Uh, but still, I think most of the projects has, uh, have enough in their, in their pockets to, 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 feel the, to feed the ecosystem. So uh, I, I, I wouldn't say that I, I, I feel like a, a significant slowdown when it, when it comes to, uh, to, to events like, such as hackathons or to yeah, perhaps slightly less young builders. That's, that's the only, uh, only difference. But it's actually pretty, pretty painful for us because that's precisely what we're looking for. Uh, but, well, it's not that bad as, as one could expect. Uh, just one more question related to the bear market. Uh, has it uh, had any impact on you? Perhaps uh, LF0 had to change uh, their focus because of the bear market? No, not really. Actually, we are well past funding, so, uh, so we didn't raise uh, recently. I'd say that the... I think the funny difference right now is uh, what we can see is that uh, less projects are less of the other projects are sponsoring conferences. So it's actually, I think it's a, a bit easier for us to to, to 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 become visible than it would be a year ago, where where other projects were actually throwing money around as uh, as crazy. So uh, I think. Its situation is much more reasonable right now. Projects are not doing so many unreasonable expenses, uh, so so uh, it makes the competition perhaps a bit le uh, more more fair. Mm, I, I, I wouldn't say that it impacted us in any any negative way, uh, with the uh, exception of perhaps a bit less young builder teams. My last question will be about our collaboration. Think Clouds and LF0 has been collaborating together for a while. Um, how do you like it so far? Was it a fruit-bearing collaboration? Yes, actually, I loved it. What, what's uh, most important here is that you uh, you help us to set up our DevOps team per basically from scratch. So it was not only uh, team extension, but basically team building. Like uh, our first DevOps have been from, from 10 clouds and they, then they, they helped us to, uh, to actually build the culture uh, around, around uh, building secure infrastructure. So I think we're collaborating already for, it's gonna be hitting two years soon, I guess. So uh, that's, some time. <laughs> that's quite some time. And uh, yeah, well, the other thing we love is flexibility. So whenever we need it, for example, front-end help, you, you've been there. So yeah, I mean, like, on, I have only positive thoughts about it. Adam, thank you very much. Thank you as well.